drive. What's happening everybody? Thank you for joining us on another installment of the Misshift Garage. Today we're going to show you uh, a few of the really important components to go through after a bearing failure in a Subaru. Yep. So we have everything stripped down, but because of the bearing fell, or wow, fell, broke, Fail? failed, 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 failed broke. broke. Uh, Same difference. You know, you got metal shavings <laughs> in all of your oil passages. So we need yeah. to clean all of that out. Otherwise it's going to cause more problems once we reassemble everything. Precisely. Yep. So um, they end up in all kinds of random spots because pretty much anything that the oil touches, um, there's a chance the shavings are going to make their way in there. So one of the most overlooked pieces are the uh, AVCS pulleys. Um, most people assume that you can't get in there because according to Subaru, it's a non-serviceable item, but you can actually split them open and get in. And based on the research that we've done, what builds up in there is actually pretty substantial. It's not just like a couple of little speckles or something that could potentially pass through and get picked up by the oil filter. Like it can actually hold some debris in there. So very important pieces to clean up. Uh, another couple other things, uh, as far as we know, you can't really split apart the uh, solenoids. I mean, obviously they'd have to, to build them, be able to take them apart, but I'm not sure it's something that you want to do in your garage. Yeah, I think you're going to be asking for problems if you tear into them. Yeah. So we're going to clean those the best we can. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to want to clean out your turbo as yeah. well. Um, yeah, it's kind of up for debate about how the best way to clean out the turbo is. I mean, it's, you know, you got your oil passage directly down the center of the thing and then you've got your drain coming out the bottom. So, I mean, you could probably just keep running oil through it, spinning the blade, kind of moving it back and forth and hoping that draws a lot of it out of there. Maybe run some pressurized oil or yeah. some kind of like spray that might be safe for it. We haven't decided what would be the best chemical for doing that because you don't necessarily want to run brake cleaner no, through it. or and, engine grease or something like that. Yeah. So that's kind of up for debate. We're not gonna worry about that today because this uh, turbo isn't actually gonna go back on the car. It's either gonna get sold or it's gonna sit on the shelf as a backup. But a couple other components that are very important as well are just the drain and the feed lines. And these things are just, uh, this is an AVCS line that runs from the head to the solenoid. Um, and then of course the heads themselves, but we can't show you right now uh, because the heads are off at the machine shop. So when we get those heads back, we'll uh, we'll do a little, um, we'll quick show you just kind of yep. what to look for in the head. Yeah, and even even though they're at the machine mm -hmm. shop, you want to still go through them and just double check. I mean. Oh yeah, you know, if they hot tank them, like you still want to check all of the passages yep. and anything you can look at, you should. Um, even if you bring heads to a machine shop, period, yeah. and it has no bearing failure, you should still inspect Always it because those hot tanks are used for cleaning a lot of different things. So it's not a perfect system. Stuff can still get sprayed all around in there depending upon how many things they stick in it at once. So it's really kind of contingent on your, your machine shop. So um, one of the other things we want to show you is the oil pan. Um, we just kind of chucked everything in here after we disassembled because, um, well, it's just filthy and we want to keep it somewhere. But yeah. the oil pan itself has a bunch of passages and baffles in it. So it's, uh, this is another challenging thing to clean out. And this is where it all ends up. Yes. It's, so you, uh, you got to make sure we get this really good. Um, mm -hmm. You're first going to want to actually take off what's left of your gasket yeah. and then clean it out. Otherwise, you're going to do the process twice. Yeah, right. So work exactly. smarter, not harder. Yep. This is a good candidate for a pressure washer mm -hmm. if you have one available. 
and even then you're still gonna wanna fill it and slosh it around. It, wash this a lot, and yes. we'll kinda show you how we're gonna go about doing that. But we're gonna kick things off by messing with these AVCS pulleys and showing you guys step-by-step -step how to remove um, each of the components so you can get into the internals of it. So we're gonna get into that now. Yep, let's go. All right, uh, it's a good idea to have something clean that you're working from. So in this case, we have a baking pan. Um, I love using these because they've got a, a lip on the outside of them, so it helps kind of contain liquids and um, keeps tools and uh, little nuts and bolts from like rolling off your table. So these are really handy. So I also label everything possible, so it's a good idea We've got this one labeled with DS, that's driver's side, and then we keep all of the associating components like right next to it, kind of in line. We do that when we're uh, taking everything apart as well and organizing, because I mean, you imagine taking this whole thing apart, throwing it all into a tote, and then afterwards trying to assemble it, just like, oh, I wonder where this hose goes, and I wonder if this is the correct sensor for the, the camshaft on the driver's side. So, okay, we got our pan. We're gonna start with the passenger side AVCS. Step number one, um, which you've already got uh, disassembled because you know, you've taken this cap off. So start here. If you can, just keep everything in place together. So in this case, you know, it gives you a nice little place to set the nuts and bolts there. I know, it's really anal retentive, but it's, I feel like it's worth doing. This seal, as far as I know, does come with the Master Subaru kit. So, um, we're gonna leave that there. So, an important thing to know is that you need a very special tool to get these off. Um, it's easy to confuse these for Allen heads. They're not actually Allen heads. They take a T30 but it has to be a five lobe T30. Now, it's kind of a hard to find tool. Um, there's a company called Company 23 that sells a lot of Subaru specific tools. Um, I wanna say I've got, I've got a tool of theirs. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on what specifically it's for, but I had to buy it. Oh yeah, it's the cam, uh, the cam lock tool. So that's how you lock these things in place so that you can do timing. Um, was it that one? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Camera failure. All right. So what you need is the T30 five lobe um, Torx bit. And that works for these bolts on the inside here. Now, some of these bolts are a M6 and some of them are an M8. So expect some of them to be in there a little bit uh, better than the others. But the first step after obviously you've removed this that you can get the bolt off which the bolts are a nightmare we all have established that so next you're going to move on in here so remove these guys obviously we, <laughs> we loosened them before doing this don't lose them, don't drill them out. There is actually very specific bolts there. Uh, we'll show you in a second here. They're kind of unique looking. Okay, so it's important to remember to take apart these things one at a time as well. Um, I wouldn't recommend taking them apart uh, both at the same time. So once you get it apart, here's what it looks like. This is your, your pulley. Here's your AVCS unit. All right, so now we're gonna disassemble the rest. Oh, hopefully I didn't just stab something important. Next piece after we've taken this cover off and uh, be careful when you take it off so you don't end up screwing up the gasket like I did. Um, so there's these little areas that you pry into on the side of it so they they fit together and there's just a little bit of space so that you can pry them open and if you end up having it slip like mine did you can uh you can tear the gasket 
Um, these are under oil pressure, so it's, it's really important to be extremely careful with all of these surfaces because a gouge could mean loss of oil pressure and leakage that you're not going to be able to fix. You can't RTV to fix this thing. Um, the, a lot of variable valve timing systems require oil pressure to actuate, um, you know, whether it's a rotor inside of a, a pulley or if it's actually um, locking pins on a camshaft, everything is really specific on oil pressure. So you got to be really careful. Um, so this is the next step. You can see this is the rotor that's inside of it, independent from the housing. Oil pressure goes in through uh, these areas here, and that's kind of what does the phasing work. Now, you have to be careful with this part because we are taking, this, uh, taking it apart, and there's all like these little... Uh, these little seals all along here, um, these little brass seals. So what you're going to do is flip it over, put your thumbs in here, and just very carefully just give a little bit of a push. Don't manhandle it, just a little bit of a push. It has oil that sits between the rotor and the housing, and it creates kind of a lock. It almost like suctions it to it. So you might have to push a little bit, but have your fingers on the backside so it doesn't just launch off. Because again, this rotor can't get scratched up at all. It needs to be, needs to be in good shape. Now do this again. This is where I, I have to preach about using some kind of a, uh, something to catch, something to work on top of, because you've got these little teeny seals and you don't want to lose these because they're going to want to fall out on you. Now these seals, not only do they have to fit in there just right? They also have these like little metal um, little springs. They almost look like a baby leaf spring, and that also goes between between. I don't know if this is brass or if these are like a plastic or something, but these little little baby springs actually fit in there. You can see that there's a curvature to it. So when you're reassembling this thing. Um, you want to make sure that all of those are accounted for. Not something you want to lose. So, organize everything. I can't preach that enough. Organize, organize, organize. We're going to set these aside. As far as I know, these are not specific to their location, but I am still going to keep them kind of in order. That one stayed put. So you can see that's what, what they look like when the uh, little spring stays put. So that's what it looks like totally disassembled. And if you look closely, you can see that there is actually a little bit of debris that's made its way in here. It's not as bad as uh, some of the AVCS pulleys that I've seen. Um, some of them in images on how to's online. Um, they're, some of them are a lot worse. You're seeing bigger chunks, but there is actually debris that you can wipe off with your finger here. So glad that we're taking this thing apart to do some cleaning to it. You can see more, more junk in here. See, it shouldn't have this. That should be clean. All right, next step is scrubbing it. Tiny bit of scoring, nothing too bad. So, I don't see any scoring inside of it besides maybe just some normal, normal wear lines. You know, you'll see a little bit of a difference in the aluminum, but what you want to watch out for are grooves. Um, the same way that you'd be looking in cylinder walls and camshaft lobes or other cam journals, um, you're looking for actual deep scratches. There's nothing inside of the, the rotor, so a rotor housing, excuse me. So we should be good to go. 
Uh, last thing to do would be just to blow everything off with compressed air. And that'll be the next step. Now we're onto the rotor. Now the rotor is a little more complicated. Rotor actually has little galleries that run in through it, so we have to try and clean out of the inside of this thing. Um, so we'll put it in the soapy water, try and clean out, clean it out this way, and afterwards we're going to soak the whole thing in oil and actuate the little piston to just make sure that we get the water out and oil into it. Again, uh, I can't emphasize enough, do not use any kind of abrasive materials for scrubbing these things. Use a soft cotton towel and just go light, hit it with uh, you know, pressurized water or whatever, hit it with the hose, but don't, don't grab like a Scotch-Brite or something thinking that you're gonna clean it up that way. And what we'll do is we'll put this into oil and we'll kind of redo the whole, repressurize the whole system with oil. You can see these are some of the passageways that lead out to these areas. And on the bottom of this, that's another one of the oil parts. That's where the little piston is. Kind of neat system. Not exactly sure how it works, but all I know is that I want to try and get any of the junk out of it. <laughs> so there we have it. I'm going to go wash this off with the hose, spray it down good to try and get all the soap out of it. And then I can rebuild this one and we'll show you how to do that. All right. Okay. So we are now going to submerge this thing in oil. Um, what I think I figured out is that you don't necessarily have to submerge the entire thing. Really, you just you have this little passage at the bottom of it where the piston goes. It's probably a good idea to submerge that, actuate it a couple of times, kind of move this thing around, let the oil get in there, push it out. You know, it'll just kind of, it'll flush the system. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I feel like it's probably more than what most people would do anyways. So submerge it in your oil. I am getting a kind of gold flake that's coming out of here. And what that is, is that's bearing material. So it's a good idea to definitely flush this thing out and actuate this little piston with fresh oil in it and just keep doing that until it starts coming out a little cleaner because um, I am definitely getting bearing material. It's kind of a... It's gonna look a little bit like a like a gold flake or gold like a bronze almost. All right, let me know if you can kind of see the flake in there. Uh, it's hard to tell. It's not. Oh, there it goes. Yep. Grab a second flashlight. So that kind of gold flake that we're getting in there, that's actually bearing material. So flushing out, flushing out your rotor, basically all the pieces of this system is a really good idea. You're getting that much material in there, that means that would probably stay in the system for a while. All right, and uh, next step is that we're gonna start assembling all of these little pieces. All right, so now it comes time to just uh, fitting the rotor in here. So you can see that there's the little piston there. And then there's this like little 
little provision down on the bottom of it, a little oil galley or whatever you'd like to call it. So you're going to align that, you're going to fit those together. If you can get it to cooperate, you'll feel it kind of sit in there. And now that you've covered this thing in oil, you have to displace all of that oil that's underneath this thing. So you might have to give it a little bit of a push. There, and it'll let out a little bit of a squish at you. And that's when you know you got it in there. And just like before, it's not gonna wanna move for you because it needs oil pressure inside the system to move that piston and allow it to turn. So don't worry too much if it's not moving for you. All right, now it's time to put these little, uh, little seals, spring-loaded dealies in here. Now, um, I don't know whether or not these have to be put in a certain way. I can't say for certain if, they're, if it's good or bad, but going off of how they were before, we're gonna put them in exactly the same way. The top here, you can see how it's almost kind of got a little slot there, it's almost U-shaped. Compared to the other side, that's perfectly square. Perfectly square goes down, U-shape goes up. So once you've got your rotor set in there, you're just sliding them into these little, little spots there. So, unless you've completely screwed up and lost every one of these little things, <laughs> this is all you gotta do now. So little tabs fit into each other. They look like that. Slot up. Fit them all the way in. Okay, slot. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we'll replace the seal here and then it's ready for reassembly. Again, the, the pin orients how she fits on here, just like that. So once the seal comes in, we'll replace that and uh, it'll be ready to go back in and get bolted onto the car. What we're doing now is we are splitting the lines from this little T, T fitting, if you want to call it that, uh, because we want this all apart so that we can uh, clean it out really well. I can't show you because I'm using audio with my phone, but uh, it's a good idea to take pictures every step of the way. So in this case, I don't think these two lines are exactly, uh, no, they're not the same length. Um, so, Take a picture of this so that you know which direction, which one's which, and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to mix them up. It's, you know, another one of those pains in the butt that can slow up your assembly later. So, these are IAG lines, I believe. Um, very nice. Uh, but these are steel and this is aluminum. So, uh, keep in mind these are different types of metals, so like a tiny bit of corrosion might form, like you see on these threads here. So that might make it harder for these to split apart. If you've had these for a long time, if they're five, six years old, um, you might have a hell of a time splitting this apart, and it might be easier to actually just flush the lines as one piece. But because we're able to get everything apart pretty easily, we're just going to do it this way. All right, so... Pretty simple stuff, it's just a soft line, so you know, you're just gonna wanna start feeding some kind of uh, a pressurized fluid through one end, 
Um, preferably something that is, uh, that's going to work to pull oils out of it. You know, a Dawn dish soap might work really decent. And, uh, you know, something that's just not gonna be caustic to the uh, soft line that's inside of this. So what most people don't realize is that uh, this is, yes, a braided line, but the braiding is actually to just cause like rigidity for the rubber. The inside of this thing is all rubber. So it's still subject to a lot of the same sensitivities that rubber has for alcohols, um, like really strong caustic uh, cleaners, that kind of thing. Granted, some, uh, some rubber is actually like alcohol safe. You know, you get that with like modern fuel lines, but in this case, why take any chances? Use something that's safe for it. And then make sure you flush it out afterwards and use compressed air. So I don't think there's any sense in us showing you how we're gonna go about cleaning these things out because it's pretty self-explanatory. In one end, out the other. Flush both directions if you can. Same thing with these fittings, you know, plug one in, flush water, soap, whatever through it. Do it over and over and over and then use compressed air so that you can blow out any of the water that's in the system. And if you're concerned about it, you can always run oil through it as well if you've got like a little oil can or something. So it's all on how anal retentive you want to be. But the moral of the story is clean it out. Now we also have hard lines. These are the exact same situation. Um, you wanna clean these things out really well. They're made out of steel, so you can probably get away with using something a little stronger. Uh, carb cleaner, maybe brake cleaner. I, it's up to you what you use for this part, but um, we'll probably spray this out with something like a carb cleaner, flush out with water really fast, and then maybe run a little bit of oil through it just to make sure nothing causes any kind of corrosion in it. So. There's that, same thing with your banjos. Um, this could be as simple as just dipping it, uh, spraying it out with compressed, uh, uh, compressed air, Dip, excuse me, dipping it in soapy water and cleaning it that way, and then spraying it all out. So this part is all pretty self-explanatory. You've got a lot of different components that are, that are lines, um, so do it all the exact same way. This is your uh, oil drain line, same thing. Everything that oil touches, is gonna have debris in it, so clean it. I think this might actually be a coolant line. <laughs> and now we're on to one of the more mysterious pieces. This is the, uh, the solenoid. Um, these things are for the AVCS system, so if there's debris that's getting into your AVCS, like we showed you on the pulley that we took apart, um, it's likely getting in here. Now, this is electronic actuation. So you've got your electronic um, controls that are inside here, you have your piston, and that's moving this piece. So at least that means that internally, you're not getting any oils in here. This is a sealed unit. So all you really need to worry about is that there's a tip here, and then that there's these, um, the, the actual piston that runs through here. Sadly, unless you actuate this, which I haven't, I'm not gonna go to that extent, you might be able to actuate it because what it does is it, it moves the piston and allows oil pressure to pass through. So that means sadly, inside of here right now, because it's closed up, you're not gonna be able to get some of that, that oil out of it. So in our case, I'm just gonna wash it out really nicely, spray it out with air. Um, I'm not gonna use any kind of abrasives in there, no, um, uh, no brushes or anything like that. Just basically dunk it, swish it around really good. Don't submerge this end, just dip it, do that, pop it out. You don't wanna to have to buy another one of these things because they are a few bucks. And that's about everything. So um, that's all of the, the lines, that's the solenoids. Um, so we'll flush all of these things out and then we'll come back to you. And uh, the next part is gonna be probably the filthiest part of the whole operation and that's gonna be cleaning out the oil pan. Yeah, that's gonna be fucking nasty. <laughs> I mean, it's where all the chunks end up, you know? Like if you look in the bottom of this thing, it's, it's amazing how nasty some of this is. I mean, look at those chunks. You seeing that stuff? It's just yeah. it's terrible. It's very nasty. Like, oh, no wonder my motor took a giant dump.
Yeah. Yep. We are on to the funnest part of this project. We are on to the oil pan, which is not the funnest part of this project. It's probably the most it's disgusting the, it's part. It's the filthiest part of this project. Yeah. So this is where everything's going to end up, if you're lucky. If you have a bearing failure lucky. or a ringland failure or fractured piston or whatever. Any internal problem. Hopefully it just ends up in here and it stays in here and the strainer doesn't pick any of it up. The um, strainer did have a couple little oh, chunks yeah. in it when we pick when we uh, took it apart. Yeah. Um, inside the oil pan, you can see really metallic flake and other little chunks. Yeah, it's like so, um, like bass boat metal flake in here. It's yeah, it's absolutely disgusting. It's really bad. <laughs> so we have to try and clean this thing out. So your options are, you can either replace the whole thing. You can get a whole new oil pan along with, no matter what, just replace these. Like even if you replace it with another OEM one, which yes, um, they are actually prone to cracking. Uh, it doesn't happen that often. Usually it's a high mileage situation or if your motor just has the harmonics are really off or something, you got a really bad harmonic balancer or you have just like funky vibrations. Or good vibrations. Um, good vibrations. <laughs> I know, that's kind of where I was going too. Um, so yeah, if you got a situation like that, then yeah, okay, like you, you might run the risk of cracking these things, but it's actually not as common as people claim that they are. So you get new OEM one or the crazy ass killer bee upgraded thing, which is pretty, pretty amazing piece. Um, so if you're willing to spend the chatter, do that, um, but the oil pan, it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to try and salvage it. Uh, they're pretty nasty. There's a lot of baffles I mean, in there you need to get around. Yeah. Um, so you have to be very, very thorough on this and just take your time. Yeah. You cannot spend enough time cleaning this thing out. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. You've got a lot of nooks and crannies. Um, so expect to, if you got a pressure washer, not a bad idea to use that if you've got I mean, if you can bring it and get it hot tanked after you go through and clean it a little bit yourself, um, that'd be a good idea. Like kind of anything you can think of. It's a good idea. That, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or just replace it if you want to spend the extra 80 bucks or hundred bucks. Um, so ours is a 2005 and I guess that the models afterwards, they have a slightly bigger capacity in the, the pan. So that's an option for upgrading too. So we've got an EJ255 and I guess the like 2008 or 2009 pans and pickups work pretty good on these and increase capacity. Um, I'm not too worried about it. Not gonna be pushing all the horsepower. So I'm just gonna try and clean this out. And if I find that it's just too much of a pain in the arse, I'm just gonna replace it with a new one. Um, so yeah, first step is just scrubbing it down, spraying it out really good. Try and get as much of the goop off it first. Yeah, take and off your then, gasket first and then well we'll get the goop off first and the then the gasket because otherwise you're just going to fill your um whatever you're using to knock the gasket off um just because it's i mean it's oh Jesus, I, I didn't even see that side yet it's caked with the, the poops if you have a better method like definitely post that up in the comments um which your method might just be buy a new one <laughs> which like, okay we cool. don't understand <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right Man, I have never seen a bearing failure this bad. Look at that just pouring out. Oh, nasty. Um, you guys have watched us uh, now clean pretty much everything up and the cleaning of the oil pan, which was quite the mess. Um, but we think it's coming out pretty good at this point. I mean, it's just got oil staining and uh, we're not seeing a whole lot of schmutz in it. Now, and again, scrub it a little more. You can always go through this a hundred times. I mean, the more the better. Yeah. Just make sure you, you get it good. Be very, very thorough because they. 
I mean, there's so many spots in there that shavings can hide and stick and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's the real thing is like, you can see that these are all ba baffles, um, scatter shields, whatever you want to call them. And uh, it's possible that shavings can kind of get caught up on the top side of it. I mean, even doing this, you can still see a little bit of sparkly stuff. So there's a little more cleaning yet to be done. And uh, then at that point, then I think we'll probably be okay. But uh, you know, at, at, it's probably worth trying this out first trying to clean out your oil pan and see if there is anything that's still kind of sitting in there. And then it's up to you whether or not you want to um, want to reuse it or if you want to purchase new. Uh, a new one is usually a hundred bucks or less. Yeah, give or take. Yeah, um, somewhere kind of depends there. on what you order from and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's really, it's kind of up to you if you feel comfortable with it or not. And actually now playing with this a little bit, got to see if we can get the rest of that out. Yep. Um, otherwise I might just order a new one, but yeah. <laughs> so, uh, another really important thing that we want to update you guys about is um, these AVCS pulleys. So, yeah. Um, so we said earlier that Subaru says that they're not serviceable, mm -hmm. and come to find out that not only can you not find the seal that you need to seal it all back up for the gasket, but you have to align them properly. Yeah. And if you don't align them properly, they can bind and actually break a camshaft if you're not <laughs> careful. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the issue that happens inside these AVCS pulleys is that when you take them apart, you'll really get perspective on what the potential problem is. And you'll see that there's like an ever so slight amount of room that these things can, they can fit with wiggle. Basically, they don't have pins for alignment in multiple places. So you've only got the one pin, which allows it to move ever so slightly. And the bolt holes are a little bit bigger than the bolts themselves. So that gives you a little bit ever so slight movement in it. And if these things aren't aligned absolutely perfect, what happens is, is that binding takes place inside of the, the pulley and that puts a ton of pressure on the camshaft and can cause it to shatter. So there, there is one shop, um, you guys have probably all heard of Outfront Motorsports. Um, they have a system where they'll actually, uh, th basically it's like a jig. They've got a jig that's gonna slide in here, align everything, and then they'll actually tighten it all down for you. And then they've got a camshaft that they're using for testing that they're actually able to test and make sure that the AVCS is working correctly. Because that's one of the biggest parts is you don't, or, you don't really have a way of, of testing um, to see if it's binding in there or not um, because when we don't have a cut apart camshaft that no. we can put air through and stuff. So what we ultimately decided to do, just based on concerns with that, it's a brand new motor. So I don't want to take any chances and have um, you know binding taking place or old worn parts going back in. And not to mention, we just couldn't find seals yeah, in the we, country. Uh, we found one guy from the Middle East who apparently has 10 of them. Yeah, he's got 10 left. <laughs> and uh, he wants $25 a piece mm -hmm. at $7 shipping. Yeah, which isn't terrible, but no. you know, it's we still run into the issue with the potential alignment problems, so we're not gonna bother with that. Uh, I just said the heck with it. I want the pulleys to last just as long as the motor, so why not start with new ones? These have 186,000 miles on them. Seals were plenty shot. It tells me that things are just kind of wearing out in there. So we'll let these things go and we'll put brand new ones on. But if you guys have really a different experience, if you crack these things open, the seals are in good shape. They're not too crushed. Um, there's nothing wrong with cleaning them out. Like we've, uh, like we've shown you how to and, uh, send it off to out front and then have them do the alignment. Yeah. And, um, Unless, you know, you have a lathe and you feel like turning the jig, that'll hold everything tight in there and um, align everything for you. If you feel like you want to try that out or if you just want to take your chances and put it back together, by all means, go for it. We just want to give you resources and information. Yeah, and so just so you can make the, the correct decision for your build. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So, okay. We, um, that's kind of where everything's at. You know, we've, we've cleaned up an oil pan. We've, uh, decided what to do with our AVCS pulleys and we've um, shown you guys how to clean them up. Yep. Got everything else cleaned up and, uh, inspected. Yep. 
So everything else is kind of on the way now. Um, blocks have, a, or not the blocks, the uh, heads have arrived from the machine yes, shop. Yes, and the new so block has arrived. Good. Yep, so. so the new bottom end is here too. So at this point, we're just gonna start assembling our motor, but we wanna say thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully this was, I don't know, informative. At least yeah, a little bit. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little more in depth than some of the stuff we've seen so far on the net. So we thought we'd throw this together. So um, I think that wraps everything up. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next episode when we start building the motor.